welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marley, if you did not know. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing all of the books that I read in December, doing my monthly wrap up. And it's really exciting because I actually completed 15 15 books in the month of December, making it my best reading month of 2020. I ended the year very strong and I'm just really happy about that. So let's just get into all of the books that I read. As I've been doing the last couple months, I'm gonna try and talk about them in the order of my least favorite to my most favorite. It was a little trickier with there being 15 books. There's just so many of them, but give or take, this is the list of my least favorite to my favorite. Starting out at number 15 is The 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. This is a little bit of a spoiler alert for an upcoming vlog where I read this book so I won't talk too much about it. If you don't know, this is a Christmas contemporary romance. So I read it around Christmas time, of course, for the 12 Days of Bookmas readathon, which keep an eye out for my vlog for that coming soon. But this follows a woman named Kate who's in her mid 30s and she signs up for this dating service that sets up 12 dates with 12 different men so she can try and find her perfect match. To keep it short, I didn't really enjoy this because it was a very predictable romance. I didn't find it to be very interesting or really give me any feelings at all so I really wouldn't recommend this book but I ended up giving it three stars because it was pretty easy to read and I did enjoy certain aspects of it mostly just when Kate would go on the dates and just kind of seeing what would go wrong with all of her dates. Sometimes it was funny and sometimes it got quite repetitive. Another book I read this month was Anna Holidays by Christina Lawrence. This is another Christmas contemporary romance. So with these being at the bottom of my list, it's clear to me that this is not my type of books and I probably won't be picking up any more of these. This follows our main character. She's I think in her mid 20s and for basically her whole life her and her family have been going to this cabin with a bunch of other families and just spending their Christmas time there together. This time the people who own the cabin announced that they are actually going to be selling it and this is their last Christmas there. Then something happens and our main character gets sent in this sort of Groundhog Day time loop where she's reliving that week at the cabin and she's trying to figure out why she's being sent back. Is she supposed to try and save the cabin from being sold? Is it something to do with her love life? That's the question. So again, this was a very quick and easy read. I think I, both of these books I read in about a day, but again, it was a very predictable romance. I wanted a certain thing to happen and then something different happened that I just found to be a lot more boring. This was my first Christina Lauren book and they are very popular. So I was definitely disappointed. Not sure if I will read any more of their books. I might give it another chance, but if they're like this, then it wasn't really that great of a book. It was a three star again. So another book I read this month was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. I read this for my video where I read five of Indigo's top best books of the year and I was very disappointed with this book since it was one of the best books of the year and I've heard a lot of good things about it. This follows our main character. I keep forgetting main character's name so I'll just say main character who has moved back in with her mother back into like her childhood home and she's noticed some weird things going on in the neighborhood with her her neighbors disappearing and new people moving in. It has to do with gentrification and has some like social commentary in it. So I was really excited but was definitely let down with where the story ended up going and with the romance and with the characters <laughs> and with the ending. I do see the appeal of this book but I ended up finding it disappointing. So again I really wouldn't recommend this because I don't think it was overly strong in the romance department or in the thriller horror horror department. Don't hate me. So this next book I actually started like back in September and I just managed to finish it at the beginning of December because it's a really long book. It's Night Film by Marisha Pessel and this book it's yeah it's thick and basically oh my gosh how do I even describe it? I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it. It follows this investigative report 
reporter who is investigating the death of this girl because she is the daughter of this famous cult classic movie director. He makes like horror films, very weird films. And so when his daughter mysteriously dies, it seems like maybe there's something weird going on with her death. Maybe it's connected to her father and what he was involved in. So this investigative journalist teams up with a couple other characters and is just investigating that whole situation. And it definitely escalates from there. I did find this book to be very enjoyable while I read it. However, I only gave it three stars due to just like the length of it. I feel like the length was a little bit unnecessary with what ended up happening. I just really think it could have been condensed. And maybe the fact that I spread out my reading it kind of like affected my enjoyment of it. But there was one part of the book that I just found very hard to get through. And I sort of had mixed feelings on the very end of the book. So that's why I gave it sort of like an average rating. I don't want to stop you guys from like wanting to read it because I know a lot of people love it but it was just sort of like an average read for me so maybe just like take your anticipation down a little bit if you're going to read this book because I don't know I think it could be a bit of a miss potentially rather than too big of a hit. Okay the next book I read was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell and this was also for my reading Indigo's Top Books video that I did. This was like a very popular bestseller this year and I definitely see why. I gave it four stars so now we're into our four star portion of the video. This is a really upsetting novel though and that is why it has to be docked a star. Also it's like very um, lengthy. This is another book I think that could have been chopped down a little but it follows. It's actually look at the name of this girl Vanessa oh my god the fact that I had to check what her name was when it's in the title earlier <laughs> she starts to get groomed when she's 15 years old by her teacher and then a relationship develops between them for basically her whole life when she's older some allegations come out against the teacher from other girls that he has taught and vanessa has to come to terms with the fact that her relationship with her teacher is abusive and is really messed up whereas she has always felt like it was true love so as you can tell from that description it's a really messed up book it's very hard to read at certain points especially in the beginning when you're seeing that grooming process but I think it is worth a read if, if that sounds interesting to you if you kind of like character studies and you don't mind kind of slower paced books. Number 10 is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Again this was one of the top books of the year and I'm slightly confused as to why. I obviously liked it because I gave it four stars but it was a little bit of a letdown to me. This is about a wedding guest list so there's a couple getting married on an aisle in Ireland. You are following the bridegroom and a few other key wedding guests and you get to see a glimpse into the future that one of the guests gets murdered or ends up dead. So the whole book is basically leading up to that moment and you're sort of wondering who died and obviously who killed them. The reason this was a disappointment for me is because I thought it was going to be like a multi-murder book, like multiple people were going to start dying. I guess sort of like I was expecting like a slasher <laughs> kind of book and and that's not really what it was. If you go into it with different expectations, you might like it more. So just know there's only one death and it's like leading up to that. So most of the book I just thought was okay. And then the ending is what really got me. I really liked the twist at the ending. And so ultimately I do think it's worth the read if you are into thriller books or if you like the idea of like a group of people at an event and like there's a murder, which I love that premise. That is that. Okay, the next book that I read was Origin by Dan Brown. So this is another edition in the Robert Langdon series that Dan Brown writes. That includes Angels and Demons, The Da Vinci Code, and a few others. And I've been reading these books for years, like I think since I was in grade eight. And this is his book from a couple years ago that I finally got around to reading. It was a pretty big book. I don't have it with me, but it was a big one that I took on this month. It was really good. At first, it was a little slow getting into it as they are pretty like dense books. If you guys don't know, Robert Langdon is like a symbologist and like a professor at Harvard. Like he's very smart and the books always have to do with like art and history and stuff. Just it can be a lot of information. So at first I was like, oh, this is kind of slow. Like 
This is kind of hard to get through, but it definitely ramped up. Robert Langdon always goes on these crazy adventures that normally take place within like 24 hours. He's on some sort of mission. He's getting chased by bad guys, that kind of thing. This one in particular deals with technology and sort of like the idea of technology and science versus religion. So if you like reading about those sorts of topics, definitely check this one out. I definitely really, really enjoyed it. Just like all of his other books. Another book I read this month was The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jones. Jewel. This is the second Lisa Jewel book that I've read and I loved it just like the first one. I read this for a 24-hour readathon vlog that is coming soon. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this book, then subscribe so you can see it. This follows a woman who was abandoned as a child. She was just found in her house. Her parents had seemingly killed themselves and she was just kind of taken and adopted. But on her 25th birthday, she gets a letter saying that she she is inheriting this house so she sort of goes back to the house and starts to find out what happened all of those years ago to her family and yeah just like where did she come from and we're seeing a couple of different character POVs and timelines so I definitely enjoyed this book I gave it four stars it definitely is a weird one it's a very compelling thriller it definitely gets weird <laughs> I don't know what else to say it's definitely exciting it has a lot of plot twists twists and turns if you're into like family thrillers I guess maybe I'll even throw out the word cult I would definitely check out this book another book I read this month was heart bones by my fave Colleen Hoover I think I read this for when tarot cards picked my TBR so you can go check out that video a little plug but this book follows our main character and she's had a really a hard brutal life her mom's a drug addict and she ends up ODing. The mom ends up ODing. So this girl has to go and live with her father who she's always been sort of estranged from. And when she's there, she meets a boy. This is a romance. In case you didn't know in case you couldn't tell from like the cover she meets this boy and he's very like mysterious and they start this romance and yeah she's sort of dealing with the fact that she's always come from like a poor not great life and now she's around these like rich people at this beach house with her dad's family and i really really enjoyed this book i don't read a ton of exclusively romance books so i feel like this one was really nice to just like read about this romance that i thought was really cute they sort of have enemies to lovers ish they have like some banters so if you like that it's definitely not one of colleen's like best or her most dramatic it's kind of like a middle of the road one but i did really enjoy the romance it was definitely what i needed this month another cute romance book we have is tweet cute by emma lord i also read this one in an upcoming vlog that you will see basically this is about pepper and jack and they end up getting in a twitter feud so if you like books surrounding social media this is a great one. Pepper's family owns this really big franchise and Jack's family owns a smaller deli and they end up getting in this Twitter war between the two companies. And then in real life, they also know each other and develop a romance. And it's so cute. As the title says, I really adored this book so much. Kind of a little cute Romeo and Juliet situation, like forbidden love kind of thing. And it definitely has enemies to lovers and it definitely has good banter so I highly recommend this one and the third romance in a row <laughs> that we have is beach read by emily henry so i gave this one 4.5 out of 5 honestly can't remember why i took off a half star <laughs> because i really enjoyed this one so much this would be like my favorite romance that i read and i read this for the tarot cards choose is my tbr video again go check it out so you guys probably have heard of this one but if not as well as these two writers the girl writes like romance happy ending books and the guy writes more like literary fiction sadder books they were rivals in college and they end up meeting up again at this like beach house they end up making this bet where the other one has to write the other one's genre and then whoever can like sell the book first wins the bet so it's definitely enemies to lovers it has that banter but it also has a lot of depth to it i feel like that has been the biggest criticism from people is they thought it would be more of a light-hearted book and then they found out it was actually more serious than they expected so be aware of that that didn't bother me though if you want cute like no angst Actually, this does have angst too. But obviously, like everything's gonna have angst, but I was not bothered by it at all. I thought the relationship was really, really sweet. I liked seeing all the different layers to it. I liked the guy wasn't a total 
future. I just really cherished this romance and it gave me hope for more romance books because as I said, I don't read a ton of them. Sometimes I don't love them. So this one just kind of like gave me hope that I can keep reading the genre. So now we get into my five star books finally. And we're gonna start with Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. So this is a hugely popular book. So I really wanted to get to it. And basically it is about Kaya who is known as the Marsh Girl. It starts out back in the 50s and we see Kaya get abandoned by all of her family and she has to learn how to survive, how to fend for herself, to see her life as it goes on. In an alternate timeline, we also have a murder mystery situation going on where Kaya potentially is involved. So this book was so amazing. I'm sorry, I was just coughing. I'm not tearing up. Although this book was emotional too. It should be better. So Kaya's story is super compelling. It's a historical fiction, which I thought might bother me because I'm not super big on history, but I actually really enjoyed reading about the different time period that I don't normally. And Kaya is just such an interesting character. There also is like a really sweet romance in it. And I also really enjoyed the mystery component as well with the murder that takes place in the future. Definitely would recommend to everyone if this is something that's on your radar really try and pick it up especially before the movie comes out I, I heard that there's gonna be a movie adaptation so very exciting all right and another book that I read that I absolutely loved and gave five stars was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter so this is a thriller and you may have heard that it is a very graphic thriller and that is absolutely right <laughs> wow it's been a while since I read this now if I can think of how the story begins it follows two sisters and they've definitely gone their separate ways one of them is super like rich and living a glamorous life the other one had more of a tougher life she has a kid and she's just not as like well off claire the richer one's husband ends up getting murdered and that sort of like starts off this chain of events of the sisters reconnecting again oh also <laughs> major plot point they also had another sister that was kidnapped when they were young that they never found out what happened to her so anyways the sisters get brought back together and we sort of find out what might have happened to their other sister that was kidnapped and is it connected to claire's husband getting murdered in the current time and honestly it just really escalates from that initial premise so i don't want to say too much more i did vlog when i read it in my tarot card picks my tbr video yet another plug moment but it's really good if you are into thrillers and if you're into graphic ones this might not be for everyone definitely be aware of like a lot of sexual assault and violence against women for this but it had a lot of good twists and turns very exciting. All right, the next book I'm going to talk about is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This was such a popular book this year and I definitely see why. It is again about two sisters. They grow up in a town that really cherishes having light skin. So despite being African American, they both are relatively light skinned and one of them ends up living her life as a black woman, staying back at that town, having a daughter who has very dark skin and the other one goes off, marries a white man, hides her past. No one knows where she comes from and then it's about both of their lives and both of their daughter's lives and how all of this affects them. Themes are like identity, race, relationships, mother-daughter relationships. There's also romantic relationships or at least one that I really adored. It honestly had everything. Oh and it's also a historical fiction as well. So this was another book that really showed me how good historical fictions can be. But yeah I just absolutely loved this. The ending maybe wasn't as strong as the middle of the book but the middle of the book was super super strong especially certain parts of it so that is why it is five out of five stars highly recommend to all and the last book i feel like i've been talking so long is anxious people by frederick bachman which i'm currently lending to my mom so i don't have with me i don't even know if I should say anything about this at this point because all the booktubers I watch have been talking about this. It is about a bank robbery that goes wrong and the bank robber ends up taking this entire apartment viewing hostage. We sort of see how these characters deal with that. We're seeing a lot of different characters' points of view, a lot of different timelines and sort of seeing how all of these characters connect and how they influence each other. It's about, it's just about people 
What's about anxious people? It has to do with mental health, suicide, and depression. It tackles a lot of different topics, and that's why I think this book is so important and why it has touched so many people out there. So that is why I would say it's my number one book of this month. Although I did read a lot of good books, as you just saw. I'm very proud of this month of reading. So I'm tired of talking. So that's gonna wrap up what I read in December. I hope you will leave me a comment and like and subscribe so you can see more videos going into the new year. Oh, and I hope all of you had a happy new year too and great holiday season. Really excited to keep reading in 2021. All right, take care guys.